Hi folks, it's Mark Smith and Dr. Larry Taylor. And we're here for the Larry and Mark show. First, we're gonna do some uh, dream interpretation or I'm gonna make an attempt at dream interpretation. We, we believe in it and we believe the more you learn about dream interpretation or have the, the ability uh, uh, to tap into somebody who can help you with that. It's a, it's a window into your unconscious. So I haven't heard this dream. I interpreted one of Larry, Larry's dreams before, but I had a heads up. I, I, had, I had read it on an email and I had a chance to ponder, but we're just going in cold. We'll see what magic happens or what magic does not happen. <laughs> yeah, just When see. did this dream occur? Uh, last night. Last night. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the dream. Um, in the dream, I got this very long letter um, <clears throat> that was explaining, uh, well, in the dream, I'm, I'm my age, you know, presently. And, and yet the long letter was about um, things I needed to do in order to complete the requirements to graduate from high school. Now, I graduated from high school and college and, you know, a long time ago. <laughs> um, but that's what the letter was about. And basically, there were two things. Uh, one was a, uh, I needed to complete a French course. And the second one was <clears throat> uh, kind of confusing to me in the letter. It, it said something about... Um, meeting with a doctor and getting something or other. I didn't really understand it. Um, so anything more about it? Not in the not. Well, it's coming, oh. um, but not right then. So I then I put the letter in the dream. This all's in the dream. I put the letter aside and, and kind of blew it off for, I don't know, a few weeks, maybe. And and then I went to, I made an appointment, went to the school to talk to the school counselor, who was a very nice lady. And um, I saw her in the hallway and you know, briefly told her what it was about. And she invited me into her office. Now her office was different. It was a, uh, it was, so we went through a door and there was this long counter, um, desk level counter, not high counter, but, um, and, it, and it was slightly curved and there were people sitting at it and there was plexiglass and you looked out into a hospital ICU. And you could walk from this office directly into the ICU. You had to go through a couple of turnstiles or something. Um, and um, the counselor sat with me and Went over, went over the record and such. And she said, uh, she told me that uh, I needed to take a, a course in French. And she set, uh, told me how to set that up. And then she told me the other thing, the thing that was confusing to me um, was simply that I needed to make an appointment with some doctor. Um, and I asked her what it was for. And he, she said, um, <clears throat> he's gonna give you a pill to make you more empathetic. <laughs> okay and then and then i thanked her and then i left through i didn't i didn't leave the way i came in i went out through the intensive care unit um and sort of as we were talking i was looking over there and you know there were typical icu things you know big um hospital beds going by people in gowns and stuff the end. Uh, when somebody says a uh, French course, taking a course in French, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, studying the, Fr the, lang the French language, um, which, which I did do when I was a kid. Um, and I've always wished that I was better at languages. Um, I even I even tried um, this was quite a while ago too. Um, I, I I think we've mentioned I've been 
married twice. Um, my uh, second marriage has been going on now for 35 years. So this was before that, because I was married to my first wife. And I, I uh, there was a French teacher in our church congregation. And I asked her if she would tutor me in French. And she said yes. And she was excited about it. And I was excited about it. And then my wife, my this would be my first wife, uh, told her that I was terrible at languages. And she told me that and it just took all the air out of my sails. And I, I pretty much gave up. Um, but I've always wished that I was better at languages, especially because the, the primary things that I'm interested in, you know, um, intellectually, like theology and philosophy and that kind of stuff. Um, when you get into advanced parts of that, it's all of it's languages are so important and I struggle with them. <laughs> so What did the uh, walking into the school counselor's office and seeing a hospital ICU, how did that grab you? Um, it, it, uh, you mean during the dream? Yeah. Um, it, it just seemed kind of matter of fact. It was like, oh, yeah, there's an ICU, you know, and, and uh I mean, it, it sort of was like that. Yeah, that makes sense, even though it doesn't. <laughs> As I think back on it, it doesn't seem to make sense that a school would be connected to an ICU. <laughs> what do you think about it now? What, what, do you, what do you think it meant, an ICU unit? I don't know. I don't know. In your work as a chaplain, did you work at uh, ICU units or? Oh, every day, yeah, yeah, every day, yeah. And when I when I was especially well, no, and all through it, but um, when I was the chaplain at uh, University of Cincinnati, they have seven ICUs there, and that's all I did was. Uh, well, not all I did, but pretty much all I did. 95% of what I did was in those ICUs. Okay. Um, tell me about the nice lady, the school counselor. Did she remind you of anybody? Mm, not, not really. Um, she was... Um, middle-aged, um, you know, rather conservative looking, very, very kind, very nice, um, um, very business-like, but business-like in a friendly kind of way. Um, so the feeling I had in the dream was that she was there to help. <clears throat> How um, concerned are you with dying? Uh, on a scale of one to 10, uh, about a 10. <laughs> Do you have looming health issues that are gonna cause you to kick the bucket before we end our show? Or is this just a, a fear? Uh, poss possibly. <laughs> um, <laughs> think we're going to make it through the show <laughs> probably yeah <clears throat> i have i have a uh mild heart condition um and i'm uh almost the same age my dad was when he died of a heart attack really okay okay well um since your your dream was last night mm -hmm and uh, your conscious knew that uh, you and I were gonna meet today. I'm thinking the, the course in high school is your um, training and graduation, if you will, into life coaching, mm -hmm. to graduate, to meet all the requirements, to pass mm -hmm. and flying colors, as they say. <laughs> um, 
the French course, I think, is probably some of the courses you've been taking on being a, a life coach mm. that you've had to do those or wanted to do those and uh, mm -hmm. have made progress with that. Um, I thought it meant maybe we were going to get some clients from Quebec. Say what? I thought maybe we were going to get some clients from Quebec. What was it? <laughs> Quebec? They speak French. <laughs> oh, wasn't thinking about that. Um, I do have lots of Canadian clients, but they all, it seems like everybody speaks English everywhere. Uh huh. Well, these days. Except in the province of Quebec. Up in Quebec, not so much, huh? Well, um, yeah, I mean, we last time we were up there, Kathy um, needed to, that's my wife, needed to see a uh, doctor and the, and the physician did not speak English. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes, there's people in Quebec that are like totally French. Sometimes a cigar is a cigar and sometimes a French class is a life coaching course. Yeah, then that makes much more sense. <laughs> yeah. um, insecurity and shame uh, got represented by your ex-wife when she said, you're terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Charles Barkley, terrible. <laughs> um, said, said that you were, you really were bad at languages. So there, that's a, there's a part of you that says you can't do this. Mm, mm, it's hard mm -hmm. it's hard for you to do this um, mm -hmm. or at least wonder can i be successful at this you wonder yeah 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 yeah, yeah that makes sense um i'm not sure who the school counselor nice lady represented um maybe maybe uh maybe uh, a confidence within yourself Mm. or a belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. And she told you that you needed to see a doctor to make an appointment to get a pill to make you more empathetic. Yeah. Um, I know in my last dream analysis, I said it was me. Now I'm going to say it's me again, because it is. Um, <laughs> um, you, you did, in fact, make an appointment today. Yeah. To... To, to make a video and to connect and to talk. And I've, I've heard you say before about you've noticed me handling um, delicate, difficult situations. And the empathy part is hearing mm. and, and then saying the right thing at the right time. You don't lack empathy at all. Mm you maybe just lack experience with the, I don't know what, I, I, my words are escaping me, uh, the, the nuances, the fine touches, just the, the magic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I th you don't need to see me to get empathy. You need uh, a little more experience um, uh, seeing the magic and then taking it into yourself and making it your own and then having some swagger to know that you can reach in and pull out the magic wand anytime you want to and go shazam mm, mm, mm -hmm. yeah confidence um, now 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 the bad news <laughs> is you got two choices <laughs> you can get busy living or you can get busy dying uh huh. In 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 the school counselor's room, there's a path that says, "Get the magic, boom! You know, get mm -hmm. the empathy. You can do this. Your your dreams will come true, or you're gonna die. One or the other." Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But I don't think the emphasis was on you're gonna die. It just was reminding you mm -hmm. that you can do this. It's gonna happen. But if, if you believe your ex-wife and you believe you can't do it and you give up hope, mm. there's a room waiting for you over there. Yeah. You have to be a chaplain in. Mm -hmm. Right. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I did, though. I, and I just remembered this. In the dream, I, 
it was definitely a feeling of uh, I'm just cutting through the ICU because it was the fastest way yeah. out of the building. I don't think <laughs> that you're destined to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like I, th I think you're a genius. That's that's uh should have been a uh young in young in uh psycho well, psychoanalyst. It, it, it's amazing how if you go for a year and you do seven, eight, nine, ten dreams a week. Yeah. And and the first thing you have to do, you have to get the context of what it means to the other person. Mm -hmm. And and then the timing of the dream means a lot. But I don't know if it's very genius, but we all have that dream where we have a test in high school mm -hmm. and, and we show up there and it's late or, or, or we're panicking. And it's always high school, it seems, or college. Yeah. It could be college yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. And then you wake up and you're, dear God, I'm 56, thank goodness, you know, or whatever age you are. <laughs> I'm not in trouble with Mrs. So and so. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's usually angst <clears throat> about requirements and challenges that we have in our that age moment, but mm -hmm. we're dreaming in code. Mm -hmm. You know, if we if we dream directly, um it would probably wake us up every time before we got to the punchline. So, mm. so we have we have to dream in code in order for the dream to be completed. Because mm -hmm. it would freak freak the hell out of us every time we'd have a dream. If it was about what it was about, we'd wake up having a panic attack every time. Mm. So it's mm. it's playful. Mm -hmm. I just I love how how the 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 school counselor was nice and encouraging and yet on the other side there, there was an icu just just lurking <laughs> just <laughs> yeah not, not yeah. something to be afraid of but just something to to pass by yeah yeah i'm, I'm not a, yeah i mean icus don't freak me out because i've been in them so much right <laughs> right, right right yeah okay well i don't know if that's one we want to send out but um, what do you think? I, I like it. I like it. You might want to stop the recording though. <laughs> oh, should we stop the recording? <laughs> if you're uh, going to do something with it. Where's, yeah. The, where's the button? So we'll, we'll send this out just as, uh, um, one, a nice piece of dream interpretation and two, yeah. being vulnerable and authentic. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Let me hit. I like it.